Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm back for another video about uh, permaculture gardening. So today I am actually doing a video on a request. Um, I had multiple people ask me what is polyculture. So I'm going to do a quick video to describe polyculture. Um, so we're standing in my side yard, almost backyard garden. Uh, this is the kids' fairy garden. So they have a little fairy house tucked in under here. They put shells and doodads for the fairies. And um, in this garden, um, the kids got to pick up some of the plants that they wanted. The centerpiece, they wanted an apple tree. So this is an Ashmead's kernel semi-dwarf apple tree. You can see it goes up. It's going to be maybe 15 feet tall if I don't prune it a little bit more aggressively. So polyculture is when you plant mixed species of plants together that benefit each other, that support each other, that um, have a positive relationship with each other. And usually your focus is around one main tree. So thinking what is going to help my apple tree in this polyculture? So right here I have a Russian Bakken comfrey and it's very young. I planted it last year. Um, so it will its large taproot will break up the soil around the base of the apple tree and help it spread its roots out. It will be cut and used as mulch. Um, it has lots of vitamins, minerals um, in its leaves, so it makes an excellent fertilizer for my plants. I actually cut it and make comfrey tea and I use it as a foliar spray on my fruit trees as well. And then in front of that I have lavender, so I'm thinking about supporting bee populations. The lavender is just about to bloom and my apple is way down blooming. So I want to think about giving pollinators that pollinate my fruit trees year-round food. So I have lavender down here. I have a peony here because uh, my kids wanted one and it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, and I have a lilac behind it that will get a little bit larger and shade some of the plants down here that don't like too much sun like my peony. There's some other um, low-growing herbs back here. I have an Oregon iris. It is a native and it also puts out chemicals that suppress the growth of grass. Grass puts out chemicals that suppress the growth of fruit trees. They're kind of natural enemies. So you want to plant plants, like there's also daffodils and uh, muscari in here that bloomed earlier in the season. All of those kind of bulbs and uh, plants suppress grass growth. So I put them around my fruit trees to keep grass from creeping in. I have a hollyhock because it flowers, the flowers are edible, the leaves and flowers make good duck food, but it also has a large root, breaks up the soil, the leaves are good for mulch. Uh, around my apple tree. And then right here, I have a rhubarb. So if you can see the rhubarb leaves when it rains, it collects the water and it funnels it down to the base of the plant. And so if I plant my rhubarb next to the roots of my apple tree, it will funnel water down and help water my apple tree, resulting in me using less water. Um, I have various other herbs in the back. I have a young June berry, which will provide me with fruit have columbine, lots of columbine, flowers are edible, um, it will shade the soil, reduce water loss, great companion plant, also brings in pollinators. Um, back here, I, that's a, sl a slightly a little bit of a different garden, this is my sunchoke area because it's sandy soil and um, there's sun back here for them. Um, I also have various other low growing herbs planted in here, all to shade the soil and reduce water loss and then provide food and or medicine for our family. So um, that's polyculture. We're talking about a mix of plants that are going to support each other, do well together, and help my fruit trees grow big and healthy.